Hi everyone, this is Dr. Nock, and here is the proof for uh, the formula for the 2x2 two two inverse matrix. So I have it here. If A is ABCD, then A inverse is 1 over the determinant of A, which is AD minus BC, multiplied by the matrix where you swap the main diagonal and then you're going to toss the negative on the C and a B. So we just learned the definition of an inverse uh, matrix. So A and A inverse are inverses of each other. If I multiply A times A inverse, this is going to become an identity matrix. So let me just keep our A as A, B, C, D. And then let me write uh, A inverse. Let me just try to write that in a different color. E, F, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then H. <laughs> All right. And then this whole thing better equal to the identity, so it's 1, 0, 0, 1. Okay, so now we also just learned how to multiply two matrices, right? So you take the first row, and then you dot it with the first column, and then you take the first row, dot it with the second column, and so forth. So let me um, write that out. So what we're going to get is A times E, and then plus BG. Now this whole thing is going to equal to 1, and then we're going to have A times F, and then plus B times H, and this whole thing is going to be 0, and then now we're going to take the second row. Now we're going to have C times E, and then plus D times uh, G. Now this whole thing better equal to 0, and then the last one is going to be C times F, and then plus D times H, and this whole thing better equal to 1. So what we're about to do is, remember, we're trying to come up with the formula for the A inverse, so that means that what we're going to do is we're going to find uh, what kind of expression that we're going to get for E, F, and then G, H. Um, just so that uh, I can explain it better, make it a little bit more organized. Let me call this as the first equation, second equation, third, and then the fourth. All right. So first, notice that circle one and circle three, the both of the variables, we, what do we got going on? E and a G. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve that system. So here are the equations, uh, circle one and circle three. So let's first solve for G by, you know what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the substitution method. I think that might be a little bit more cleaner. So what we're going to do is this. We're going to solve for G from here, and then we're going to uh, plug that G back into the, the first equation. So ready? So if solving for uh, G from the second equation, which is circle 3, what do we get? We're going to have and G equals, let me see, that's negative C times E, and then whole thing dividing by D. Hopefully I did that right. Now I'm going to plug this G into here. All right, so then what do we get? So that implies that we're going to have A times E. My goodness, changing the color is becoming a chore right now. And then B times G, so our G is negative C times E. Now, whole thing divided by D, that's a D, and that this whole thing is going to equal to 1. So, let's keep going then. So, this is going to be A times E, and then minus B, C, and then E, whole thing divided by D equals to 1. So, now, um, I want to combine this into a one fraction, so then what we're going to get is we need a common denominator of D. So here I'm going to have A, D, E, and then all over D, and then minus B, C, and then E. I'm trying to do this step by step, and then all over D, and this whole thing equals to 1. So that implies that we can combine those two fractions together, and furthermore, let me factor out the E. So we're going to have E times AD minus BC, whole thing dividing by D equals to 1. 
So boom, so guess what? Our E, we're able to solve for E. So our E is going to be D over AD minus BC. So what we just did was we're able to solve for our E. E is done. All right, so now we're going to do the same thing for uh, equation 2 and a 4 because they both have the common variables uh, F and H. So um, let me just do this step by step. So I'm going to take 2 and a 4. So here they are. So now we're going to do the similar thing. So let me first try to solve for H. So let me first try to solve for this H. Then we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to substitute whatever that I get into this H here. All right. So anyway, so let's just keep going. So if I solve for H, what is that? That's negative AF and then whole thing divided by B. So let me just box that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to plug this back into here. So what do we got? We have C times F and then plus D times H. So this is negative A times F and then all over B. Now this whole thing equals to 1. And then we're going to combine that into a 1 fraction, like, just like what we just did earlier. So this is same thing as B, C and then, oops, F all over B and then minus A, D and then F all over B. Now whole thing equals to 1. So now let me just factor the F out. So we have a F and then we have a B, C minus A, D whole thing dividing by B equals to 1. So that means that our F is going to be B over B, C minus A, D. All right. But this is exactly the same thing as negative B over A, D minus B, C. All right. Good. So we got our, our value for F, not value, the expression, I should say. So let me just box that. So what do we got? We just solved for our F. Okay, so, so far we have our expression for E and a F. So what we need to do is we still have to find the values for G and H. So let's first go with um, finding G. So let's take a look at equation 3. If you remember, if you flip your page over, our equation 3 was given by CE. Let me just write it as C times E and then plus D times G. Now this whole thing equals to zero. Now what I'm going to do is since we already have the expression for E, I'm going to replace this E with D over AD minus BC. All right, so then here we're going to have C times D over a D minus B C and then plus D times G. This whole thing's gonna equal to zero. So that implies that we're gonna have a C D over A D minus B C. Um, this whole thing is going to equal to negative D G. Oops. Alright, now solving for G, what I need to do is I need to multiply both sides by negative 1 over D. That should take care of it. Let me see, negative 1 over D. Okay, so then what do we get? What we're going to get is CD all over D times AD minus BC. This whole thing is going to equal to G. But the cool thing is I can kill those D's. So therefore, what do we got? Our G, let me just go this way. So our G now becomes C over AD minus BC. So let me just box that. Okay, so one more variable to go, which is just H. Now to find H, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take equation two now equation 2 was given by AF and then plus BH and this whole thing was 0. 
So now what we're going to do is remember we're trying to solve for h. Now I already have the expression for f. Our f is given by negative b over ad minus bc. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this expression in place of f here. Okay, so if I do that, then what are we going to get? We're going to have a times negative b over ad minus bc and then plus b times h this whole thing is going to be zero so then what are we going to get so we got negative ab over ad minus bc equals to negative b times the h so we're going to do the same thing let's just multiply here by the reciprocal of negative b which is negative one over b and I'm going to multiply here by negative 1 over b. Sorry, um, I don't know if you can see this color very well. Uh, but anyway, so what do we get? On the left-hand side, we're going to have ab all over b times ad minus bc. Now this whole thing is going to equal to our h. So then, kill the b, kill the b. So then look at it, beautiful. So what do we get? So that implies that we're going to have our h is going to be a over uh, ad minus bc so here is what we got we we're able to solve for ef and then g and then h so let's just recall what our a inverse kind of looked like so remember this setup we had a b c d so that was our a and then here um, i always have to sing my alphabet a b c d e f g h there we go all right so this is supposed to be the a inverse right because a times a inverse and then this whole thing became an i all right so then let's just take our a inverse so therefore our a inverse is going to be now notice that i can factor out the 1 over ad minus bc from each term so what i'm, I'm going to do is i'm going to factor out ad minus the bc now here, our E is going to be D, F is negative B, G is C, and then our H is going to be A. So here we have, here is the little proof for why the formula works.